Hey beautiful girl, we are going to talk today about the blessed woman. I don't know about you, but I want to be a blessed girl, and I know you do too. Hello beautiful girl, today welcome to the Women Rock Show. We are a whole bunch of girls diving into the Word of God and finding out what God says about being a woman and lessons about what God wants us to do and how He wants us to do it. You know, the world is screaming all of these evil things at us, telling us who we are, what is beautiful, and what is um, the definition of feminism, and what is the definition of what the world wants us to be. And yet, did you know that God actually defined it? He created us, he molded us, and he shaped us. And so we are going to start our Women Rock show in Proverbs 31, and there's many different lessons that we've already done. And so today, we're going to dive into Proverbs 31, 28. So get your Bibles, and let's go there. Proverbs 31, 28. And it says, Her children will rise up and they will call her blessed, her husband also, as he praises her. Her children rise up. That's kind of interesting. I was looking this up in the Greek and, and in the Hebrew, and it was talking about to rise up is to be accomplished, to confirm, to declare, to continue. So her children are making a declaration of their mom. And then it says that she is blessed. They call her blessed. That's a sheer. And I'm probably totally demolishing that in Hebrew. But it says happy. It means prosperous. It means successful. It means straight. So they are calling her out. They are declaring that their mom is successful, that she is straight, that she is happy, that she is blessed, that she is prosperous. And I don't know about you, but when I think about me and my children or my mom and my relationship or my grandmothers in my past and the generations that have gone before me, I want to say that we are blessed women. And why are we blessed women? Because we are women of the Most High. Because we belong to God. Because God is in us and he works through us. And we parent that way. We are wives that way. And so we become all that God needs us to be. I was watching one of those social media videos. And this woman came on and she was um, very inappropriately dressed, honestly. And she was talking about her two teenage daughters behind her and saying how much they hate her. And they were like throwing shade at her and making faces at her. And, it, and they were all laughing like it was a funny thing. And I remember at the end of this video, I thought, that is twisted. That is not how God wants us to be with each other. And that is actually not a blessed woman. This is a woman who has cursed her children and herself. And I don't want us to be women that fall into what the world says we need to do, that go into society and become like the world and look like the world. We need to be women. Proverbs 31 women look like Jesus, and we act like Jesus, and we carry the authority of Christ in our marriages, in our parenting, in all that we do behind the scenes and in front of people. And I remember when I was a young girl, um, I was a bad teenager. I was like Mrs. Rebellious, and I paid the price for it. I got myself into so many bad situations. And I remember my mom, she would not put up with it. I was rebellious, and I would lie, and I would believe my own lies. And my mom, she would not put up with that. She would say, no, you're not going to do that. She would never let me get away with it. And I remember one time she wasn't giving me what I wanted. And I just screamed at the top of my lungs, I hate you. And in that moment, I will never forget the look on my mom's face. She just paused. She was deeply wounded. And my mom, if you know this woman, never has not a word to say. She is a strong woman, and she always knows. But I could tell I deeply wounded her. She turned around, and she walked out the door. And I knew at that moment, ooh, that's not good. Like, I'm in a really bad place. And thank God for his mercy. Thank God for my mom's prayers for me. And thank God that the Lord got a hold of me. And he turned my heart around. And now my mom is like my best friend. Now my mom is my confidant. I can call her. She gives me godly advice. She leads me into the hard places. And I go, is this normal? Is this how things are going to be? Now I look at my mom and I would never say I hate her, but I would say I love her. And she is a blessed woman, and she is anointed by God. And she did what she needed to do in those times when I made it really hard for her to be a good mom. And so 
If you are in this situation, you maybe have some wayward teenagers. Maybe you are fighting constantly and you feel like you're failing as a mom. You just stick in there and you do what God's word says. Because when God's word says it and you do it, he'll back you in it. And so as you parent the way that God has asked you to parent, then God is going to cover you in that. And he will bless you and your children will be blessed from one generation to the next. I love this. You know, my dad, this verse goes on to talk about her husband and her husband praises her her as well. I think about my dad. Um, Just recently, he was bragging on my mom. We have like a family group chat. And so he sent out this group chat and he's like, I'm so in love with your mom. And I remember my brother was like, text me on the side, what is going on? Are they fighting? (laughs) Because it was just so random. And so we called them and they were like, no, my dad's like, I'm bragging on her. She just did this and just did this and you should see what it looks like. It's amazing. And if you know my mom, there's just nothing the woman can't do. She touches it and it's beautiful. And so he was bragging to all of his kids about how wonderful she was. And I, I loved that moment because I go, wow, I hope my husband one day does that with our children. And I pray that my children have spouses that do that for them and that my boys do that for their wives and that my, that my daughter has a husband that will do that for her. You see, God wants us to create an atmosphere of beauty, an atmosphere of celebration, an atmosphere of blessing and prosperity because that's what God has called us to. Now, you might be living and coming from a place where this doesn't doesn't happen in your life. A woman with a good reputation, that means that her character supersedes and her reputation follows her and it looks like Jesus. This is a big deal. And so when you work hard to build something, sometimes you don't always see the results of this. And sometimes you may be feeling like, how can I be this Proverbs 31 woman? I've messed up way too much. This is not who I am. You also might be a single girl. I was thinking about you single girls or maybe the mom who can't have kids. I know that you could read these verses and your heart begins to ache and there's this deep pain of unsatisfied prayers or unanswered moments and you wonder where God is and you find yourself avoiding weddings, you find yourself avoiding baby showers. There's these these, um, insecurities that the enemy will bring in those moments and I wanted to encourage you today that don't not read these verses but to know that you are not defined by being a mom or you're not defined by being a wife, a helpmate. But you are defined by being a daughter of the Most High God. And you are defined by serving Jesus Christ here on this earth. That's who we are. And if you don't have a husband, you are a helpmate to Christ. That means that you are coming alongside of him and you are his bride and he is your God. He is your husband. And if you don't have children, then you know what? There are many people in your life that need you to love them with that motherly love that is already built inside of you. I think of a friend that I have and she never had her own kids, but boy, did she become the aunt of all aunts. She goes and takes them on vacations. She takes them shopping for clothes. She takes them after church to lunch. She puts the word of God into them. She truly turned around her situation of maybe she wasn't going to have her own biological children, but she was going to take care of the ones that were in her life in that moment. What a call. What a moment from God. There are many kids that need to be adopted. There is foster care. There is kids that are hurting that don't have parents that are actually engaging them and loving them. There's youth ministries in your church that need you. There's children's ministry that you can volunteer for. There's always a way that you can love a child with that beautiful love that God has put in us as a woman. And And so Hosea actually addresses this, and I think it's beautiful in Hosea 2, 19 through 20. It's actually God talking. And he says, I will make for you, I will make you my wife forever. Those are really encouraging words. And it says, showing you righteousness and justice, unfailing love and and compassion. Verse 20 says, I will be faithful to you and I will make you mine. And you will finally know me as the Lord. You see, God is coming after you. You are his wife. You were created for him to serve him. So when you feel discouraged with those unanswered prayers, remember you're not alone and that Jesus sees you. Psalms 38, 8 through 9 says, I am exhausted and I am completely crushed. My groans come from an anguished heart. You might feel like that. You might completely understand where David was in these moments. Verse 9 says, you may know what I long for, Lord. You hear my every sigh. 
You may not be able to pray anymore for that husband you were wishing for or those children you wish you got to have. But I'll tell you right now, it's the, your groans and your sighs that God hears and he knows and he remembers. Know that he loves you, that he sees you, that he's with you in your pain, that he's with you in those lonely moments, in those limbo places of life. You might be going through a divorce right now and feel really discouraged like you failed at marriage. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus is with you in those moments to pick you up, to hold your hand, and to walk you through it. You might be in a very painful season of life. Maybe you are missing your husband because he's passed away and he's no longer here. But you are still a woman of God. You are still a wife to God. You are still a daughter of the Most High. You are still a servant of the King. And so, girlfriend, these verses are for you as much as they are for the wife and to, to the mom. Psalms 37 4 says, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. Five, verse 5 says, Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will help you. I love this verse right here Commit everything you do to the Lord. Sometimes we want to do things our way. We want to make things happen in our time. We want to make it work the way that we think it should work. And yet God is saying, would you just give it to me? That every part of your life as a woman is everything I've created you to be. And so would you press into the one who is your creator? Would you trust him enough to let go and stop being in control and allow him to control all those places in your life? The heartaches, the, pain, the pains, the joys, the laughter, the friends, the discouragement, the rejection, the unforgiveness all of the things that we have to deal with as women, God calls us blessed. God calls us to be called. God calls us anointed to do it. God is going to equip you and give you people in your life to be able to pour Jesus into. And you are not alone. You are not without a husband. You have Jesus. You are not without children because God is going to bring people into your world. But maybe it's time for you to open your heart up in a new way and see what God has for you and look for opportunities. Ask the Holy Spirit in your prayer time to bring people into your life that you get to love. Rest in him and wait on his timing. Psalms 42, 1 through 7 says, As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I think about that verse, and there's moments when you just love God so much and you can't wait to be in his presence. You can't wait to wake up and just say, Good morning, Lord. This is what God longs for us as women, is for him to be our first love. And then it says, verse 2, I thirst for God. The living God, when I can, I go and I stand before him. And when you're single, you can go whenever you want into the house of God. You don't have anyone telling you or someone else's schedule to control you. You can be in church as much as you can. When you are a married woman and you have children and you have to make time, you have to make a priority of church. You have to make a priority of getting the word of God into their hearts. And you have to, to in a way, schedule these things that are important, just as much as sports and all the other stuff, we have to make time for God. We have to run after God. We have to thirst after him. We have to put that into our husbands and our children and all that we do because a blessed woman understands the depth of this. If you don't have children, find a way to give to the younger generation. We've heard that old saying, it takes a village to raise a child. It's true. I have to tell you, I am so grateful for the friends that are in my life, for the people in our church that can give my children advice when they don't want to listen to mom anymore, even though they said the same exact thing I just said. They come home, oh my goodness, pastor so-and-so just said this to me, and it's so life-changing, and I'm thinking, I had that conversation with you last night. But okay, <laughs> because we need each other. And so you're going to be a beautiful voice helping someone raise their child in the ways of God. What an awesome gift we have in each other. Isn't that good news? For those of you that are moms and wives, this is a goal, to be called blessed and to be praised. This is a lifetime job that brings great sacrifice. You are not taking the vacations that you would want to take because you got to make sure that you're doing the vacations that the kids need and that everybody else needs. You're not eating the food that you make every night because they ate it all before you did. Their clean underwear and their chonies are because you stayed up late and made sure that they got clean and folded and put away. You see, those are the things that people don't see. How about the helpmate to the husband when he's on a project and, and you come alongside and go, how can I help? How, what can I do? When you're building a business on the side and when you're, when you're building a family as well, God sees all of that and everything you pour into that you so tire, tirelessly, I'm sorry, I'm not good with words, but tirelessly put yourself into that you sacrifice. God sees that. And every moment that you feel that you're tired, 
God is going to give you the courage and the strength to continue on, and he's going to anoint it with his presence and his love and his grace to get you through it. Do not give up, mamas, when you're tired. Do not get frustrated when your kids are not serving God as you've trained them to do. You keep praying for them. You don't give up on them. You hold on. You don't let the devil take them. You fight for them, and you tell that devil to go back to hell where he came from, and you bless your children. Do not curse your children. Speak life over them. Speak life over your marriage. Speak life over your husband. Maybe he's bugging you. Maybe he's annoying to you. Dan and I just got into a little tiff this morning, and I have to say, you know what? It's not worth being frustrated with each other. I love that man. He's the best guy in the world. And so when we can stop ourselves and go, you know what? I'm not going to play into the devil's game. I'm going to catch myself, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to be all that God has called me to be. You see, you turn around the work of the enemy, and you, you press on, and you release the power of God over your family's lives, and over your marriage, and over the people that are in your world. Psalms 31, 29 says, many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. I don't know about you, but to be blessed was great, but then to be set, told by God, you've done well, that's I don't know about you, but when you work hard and somebody says, hey, good job, that's awesome. Because then you know, okay, I've accomplished, like, the, all that hard work did pay off. But then God says that you excel, you're going to go beyond where others go. You're going to see things in a greater way than other people are going to get to see it because you're going to be in the supernatural presence of God in your call of being a mom and a wife. That's beautiful. This is a position and an honor and a grace from heaven for us women. This is how God sees us. Isn't that amazing? You may feel right now like this is what God is saying over me. I don't know about that. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm not feeling like this girl. But God wants you to win at life. You may feel like you came from the worst family where sin ran rampant. And there was just one bad thing after another. You may, not, you may be a brand new believer and you're going, there is way too much that has happened for me to like fix this. There's no way that I can fix the damage that's been done. There isn't enough time to fix these mistakes, Pastor Jess. Well, I'm here to tell you, with God, time is not an issue. That in the presence of God and in a moment, God can heal, restore, and fill you back up. God can equip. He can take back everything the enemy has taken from you. And you have power and authority in Jesus Christ who lives on the inside of you to say that everything the devil has taken from you, maybe it's a relationship with your children, maybe it's a marriage, maybe it is friendships, maybe it's all the things that we manage. I want you to just stop for a moment after this video and I want you to pray and command those things back in the name of Jesus seven times. The Bible says, I wish I had the scripture out for you, but it says that what Satan has taken from you, you can command it back seven times. And so girlfriend, take your authority. We are these women. We are blessed, we are called, and we are anointed. And he wants his girls to step out and to be all that he wants us to be. And so he loves you today. You need to read daily to fill your spirit man up so that you can go out and be that blessed woman. Get yourself in church. Get yourself filled up with the word. Be around a company of believers. Your atmosphere and who is influencing you is humongous in a woman's life. A blessed woman doesn't hang out in the world and with the worldly people. A blessed woman finds godly friends, finds an atmosphere in a home, and creates beauty and creates heaven for her family, her friends, and the people around her. That's what a blessed woman does. And so I'm here to tell you today, you are that girl. You may not have been that girl in the past. Don't let the devil condemn you. But you now can step in and become all that God has called you to be. So girlfriend, get out there and be that blessed woman. I'm so proud of who you are. Maybe you've been listening to this and you're going, well, I don't really even know about this Jesus you're talking about. I, I, I want to know who he is. Well, the Bible is very clear that Jesus is coming after you. He loves you. He gave his his life. He died on that cross for your sin and your shame. And Jesus says in the word of God that no man comes to the Father except through him, through Jesus Christ. That all you have to do is believe and pray and confess that he will be your Lord and Savior. You have to ask Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. It's that simple. You say, well, how do I do that? We are going to pray a prayer together. And when you pray this prayer, you are asking Jesus, because he's a gentleman. This is not about the words of our mouth, but it's about a relationship with him. And he loves you so much. And he's calling you home, calling you back to him today. And so we'll pray this prayer. You can repeat it after me. And when we're done, 
then you can go ahead and go to www.rockchurch.com and we will get a link to you. We can send you some information so that you don't do life alone. But let's pray right now. Go ahead and close your eyes and bow your head and repeat after me. Dear Father God, I come before you right now, a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask that you would forgive me of my sins, that you would fill me, Holy Spirit, that you would make me a new creation in Christ Jesus. Today is the day that I leave hell behind and I'm headed for heaven. Today is the day that I learn what it is that you have for me. Lord, thank you for saving me, for loving me, and for cherishing me. Today's the day that I am a Christian. Amen. You just did it. I'm so excited for you. The Bible says that when one person prays that prayer, that heaven has a party. So can you imagine what is happening right now in heaven for you? So listen, don't do life alone. What do you do now that you're a Christian? Go to www.rockchurch.com. Click the little get to know God button and somebody will get connected with you. We'll send you some information. I love you so much. We'll see you at the next Women Rock Show. Love you girls.